this might be a proof yeah man my viewers my subscribers yes back with another video another one here is a woman that speak about tiktok you know yeah man she has every time she posts something like tiktok um block her video or ban her or something you see me yeah man or then probably i try to delete her channel and all that she has say you see so we just want to know if just check out our video them because I have both couple of them upstairs you see me yeah so we just want to know if check out our video you know if you like the video man you know you just subscribe to the channel as usual you know yeah man and let me know what you guys think in the comment section all right TikTok, I'm on my way to church and I have to say this. You are not fair when it come on to black people. Whatever black people do or say, you run and you take their video down. You don't know if it's truth, you take their video down. One video I stitch, people have been giving rave review about it you take down the woman video there is nothing in there racist nothing at all you make up community guideline as you go along just to get us out of it if you don't want black people on your platform TikTok, all you have to do is to say no i wish our government would take you down and let somebody else put a platform with, that we can go on. You are not fair to black people. It is not fair. Everything we do, you take it down. You make all the money. We don't make any. And you take it down. For the Jamaican restaurants. Okay. When, okay. First off, for the, for the hirees who are hiring people. Okay. Make sure when you're hiring these people that they don't have attitude. Because I know they don't have <laughs> attitude in the, in, the, in the interview. But you need to... Give them a scenario where they're able to bring out their, their true selves. I don't understand why is it I come in, I get referred to your restaurant, I come to your restaurant, and I get greeted with a screw face. Oh, Lord. And, uh, I and, can't uh, believe she's saying this. So when we walk in, like, there's nothing wrong. I get it that you guys have bad days. Everybody has bad days. But you chose. Remember, this is for anybody who works in fast food. You chose that occupation. I didn't choose yeah. it for you. You chose it. So for you to be behind a counter and being vexed because somebody's asking you, hey, what do you guys have? Because half of the time, half of your shit is empty. So I know you guys have shit in the back. So I'm asking you, yo, do you have any more oxtail? You're looking at me like... You're crazy. You know, say there's no oxtail right here. So. And to you, it's like, well, ma'am, I know you have some in the cut because it's literally 12 o'clock and there's no way you guys could be out of oxtail that fast. Oh you get what I mean? So now God, you're giving 12. me attitude, but I'm asking, you a, I'm asking you a general question. Then on top of that, you guys know my personal opinion. Have When you guys have oxtail there, you guys know. 99.9% .9 of the people come there for the oxtail gravy. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you have a side of gravy in the back yeah. so that when people come in and ask you, hey, can I get a side of gravy? Oxtail? I'm awake. I've never had an open vision like this before. I don't know what this is. I think I'm watching 9-11 unfold again. And so while I'm sitting there, the whole television screen switches. And this news anchor comes on and he says, ladies and gentlemen, the oddest thing is happening. Normally, hurricanes form in, over the ocean, over water, and then they come upon, uh, uh, on shore. He said, but there is a hurricane that has formed over America. And while he was talking, it went to a satellite image. I saw literally from north to south, from east to west, uh, the, the side of a hurricane, a storm, that was over America. The eye of the storm was moving right down the center of America. The, the news anchor said, this is the oddest storm, this hurricane, this is unbelievable. He's describing this thing. And then he says, ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have a correspondent who is on the ground in the eye of the storm. Immediately, the, the television goes to this correspondent. And like you would see with any other you know, news report, in a hurricane this man's kind of being beaten and tossed with the wind and there's you can see the de debris just swirling around his his body and he's saying you know ladies and gentlemen this is an unusual storm this isn't like any storm that I've ever reported on and he reaches down on the ground and he picks up a handful of one dollar bills and he said ladies and gentlemen he said this is a storm of dollar bills well when he said that immediately it came back to the news anchor and now again keep in mind I'm awake I'm thinking this is actually happening right 
I, I, it hasn't dawned on me that this is a vision. I think this is the real deal and this is actually happening. And so it comes back to the news anchor and, and the news anchor says, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there's been another tragedy that has hit America. We have just experienced a major earthquake on the New Madrid fault line. And immediately I started seeing pictures of devastation all over the New Madrid fault line. I saw cities that were flooded. I saw cities that were destroyed. I saw people walking around in the streets, stumbling around in the smoke and in the debris. Uh, they looked like they were dazed. People were crying out for help. And, uh, and while I was watching this division, it was like the, all of the United States was just split in half. While I was watching this, behind my right ear, I was sitting on the couch and behind my right ear, I heard a booming voice, which I believe to be the voice of the Lord, that said these words, they divided my land, now I will divide their land. I knew immediately that God was speaking about Joel chapter 3, where God prophesies through the prophet Joel about the parting of the land of Israel and judgment coming to the nations. And God said, I will re reward you swiftly, quickly for what you've done to my land. And so I felt like this earthquake, and I, you know, as people say, was it a literal earthquake? Was it a spiritual earthquake? Was it a, a, a dividing of the nation? I can't say. All I can tell you is what I saw. I can tell you that I saw devastation. I continued to watch the television, and by this time, you know, I'm sitting on the edge of my seat. I'm thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? Do I go wake up my family? Do I call people? How am I going to open the church? What's the church going to do? I'm, th I'm a thousand. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. A thousand thoughts are going through your mind in just a flash. And then all of a sudden, I see more pictures going on television. People are rioting in the streets. I see riots all over America. I see cities on fire and blazing. I see people riding in the streets, looting buildings, things of that nature. And one of the things that sticks out to me more than anything else in this vision that I've never forgotten is I saw people holding a signs, big signs. And on the signs it said, I want my entitlements. And I knew that this had something to do with the economy. When I saw these signs, I want my entitlements, immediately I was sucked up uh, from where I was right then. And I was just in a flash, I was sitting in a room in the Middle East. Now, you say, how do you know it's the Middle East? Because I've been to the Middle East several times, and the Middle East has a feel to it. Anybody that's been to Israel or that part of the world knows that the Middle East just has a feel, that Mediterranean feel that no other place in the world has. I knew I was in the Middle East. And uh, I was sitting in a room and there was a long table and there were heads of nations around these tables. I can tell you who was there. China was there, India was there, Indonesia was there, Syria was there, Turkey was there, Iran was there, uh, uh, just uh, Saudi Arabia was there, Russia was there. I mean, I could just go on and on. Egypt was sitting around the table. All of these nations were sitting around this long table and they were having a discussion. And the discussion was how to destroy America. And they went around the table in this discussion and, uh, you know, they tossed several ideas and finally one of the people stood up, uh, which I, I could tell you the nation that stood up, but I want to hold that for a later time because the Lord hasn't released me to say this. Uh, only to my church has He released me to, to share that. But this nation stood up, leaders stood up and said, I can tell you how we're going to do it. The American dollar is in trouble. There is nothing holding stability to the American dollar except one thing. He said, here's what it is. All of us have to purchase dollars. It is the world currency. We have to purchase dollars to buy oil. And he said, what we're going to do is we're going to buy and sell oil with a different currency other than the American dollar. And when you take that one thing out of that equation, the American dollar will collapse. They're having this discussion. And I'm sitting here like a third party listening to this. And I'm thinking, what in the world am I hearing? And one guy, they started having a discussion, okay, what currency are we going to use? And they went around the table and nobody could come to an agreement of a currency. And finally, one of them said, I know what we'll do. We can all agree that we will trade oil for gold. Will everybody agree to that? And they said, yes, we will agree to that. And I knew immediately when I heard that, I immediately hit my body. I was sitting back on my couch. I came to. I was awake. I was shaking. I couldn't believe what I'd just seen. I knew God was showing me something that was about to happen. The Lord showed me some other things while I was in that about the Middle East. I saw the entire Middle East pushing America out of the Middle East. Ministry of Education, I have a bone to pick with you. Why are so many Jamaicans ignorant of their own history? Hmm? Why so much done people in my comment section? Oh my God, people, stop it. The Jamaican accent is not an African dialect. The Jamaican accent, like everything associated with modern Jamaican heritage, is in fact the byproduct of the cultural melting pot that our motto embraces. In fact, in terms of cadence, it's most similar to an Irish accent. Hey, I've been shook enough now, to be honest, since the, the racing has been turned on, the legs are like jelly, but... Um... Yeah, I suppose we did a bit of celebration. <laughs> They're Jamaicans. So, 
a Chinese lady who is probably second or third generation Chinese, right, is going to come and lecture Jamaicans about the origin of our accent. This is hilarious. I had to buy it. I see this video going all over and I say, you know what? Let me hear it out and take it on. First of all, lady, you see how you talk is not how me talk. First and foremost, you talk like uptown Jamaican people. It's only of the Irish lilt and the Irish cadence. You see the rest of we? The rest of we talk like Africans. The part where we talk is descending from Africa. The words where we use, straight out of Africa. The Ibo, the Yoruba, the Ashanti tribes of Africa. Let me tell you why. Because all of this predated when your ancestors came to Jamaica. Because really and truly, you don't know much about our language. If your parents weren't Chinese, your grandparents were Chinese. Now listen to me and listen to me good. Lady. The Irish people who came here as indentured laborers, the uptown Jamaican them tried to copy them because they did not want to sound like the rest of us. They wanted to sound different from us. Right? They come on at them, the black people. Because at that time, anything black, no good. So that is why... Uptown Jamaicans don't talk like the rest of us. We come from either out of town or downtown. Even though a Kingston six my born and go, but we make we ignore that part there. Right? I'm representing for the majority of Jamaicans. So Miss Chinese lady, whatever your name is, really and truly you are wrong. You are one hundred percent wrong. There is a reason why there are different cadences right through Jamaica. Right? There's a difference. The reason is, Irish indentured servants that came here, they were copied by the uptown people them, and their descendants talk like them too. The rest of we, with the African ancestors, we sound like them. So take your history lesson and keep it for you and your uptown friend them. This On is Monday not a game out here. Be aware Georgia, of what police you're up against. Throwing around the N word, fantasizing slavery, and making lewd remarks about preferred sexual contact with black women. The incident brought a member of the mayor's office to tears. Uh, I mean, honestly, this is one time when I'm speechless. There are no words that can describe um, what I felt looking <clears throat> at the video with a friend of mine who is black. It's been one week since the mayor's assistant and city council heard the racist conversation between their now ex-police chief and patrolman, Gene Almond and John Brooks. In the newly surfaced video, the week of the Rayshard Brooks killing, they lamented having to work a Black Lives Matter protest in their own city and saying the Brooks killing was justified. It's like you've killed them 27 times. Also, reasoning slavery as something black people should have been grateful for. For the most part, it seems to me like they furnished them a house to live in. They furnished them clothes to put on their back. They furnished them food to put on their table. And all they had to do was work. Got our body cams on. I don't know whether they will work or not. In an extended portion of the body cam that I picked up in Hamilton on Monday, we see Brooks' face for the first time and hear a conversation between him and his wife. He's giving her an update on the protesters, thinking his body cam is not working, and he assures her that armed white people will handle the mostly black protesters if they get out of hand. He tells her he got the assurance from his lodge brother. So I'm guessing that if they start trying to tear something down, that the white folks with the guns will step in and... You know what? I'll just let them take care of it. I ain't gonna like this one. I've only ever had issues with other black cops. I've had more issues with black cops than I've ever had with a white cop. I've had more issues with other black men and women than I ever had with a white man or a white woman. This is why I don't like talking about race on my platform because I don't think y'all really ready to hear the shit I gotta say. But with this, these five Memphis officers and Tyree Nichols, it's about time we fucking have it. Baby, the self-hate in our community is so fucking detrimental and pivotal right now. But I feel like y'all get off on giving y'all power to other people, to white people. Contrary to what the fuck y'all see on the news, they don't even have to... They, they got y'all doing the work for them at this point. White supremacy and, and the elites. They got y'all doing the work for them now. Because look at these five Memphis cops. Y'all think that shit is normal? Y'all think that shit is just a, a one-time occurrence? No. 
I've lived in the South for over seven years and every running I've ever had with the law was at the hand.